Hi Aries, it's me Stormy and here is your 2018 yearly horoscope and man it's going to be an interesting, hardworking, ambitious kind of year. But before we jump into the forecast, the 2018 birthday appointments which are my yearly gift to you guys are up right now. Click in the description box down below, grab your spot. They go so fast so if you want one of these appointments make sure you click down there and grab it. All right, Aries, so this year, we look at the energies that we even carried over from 17 into 18, and one of which is that Saturn is in Capricorn. So we have got some taskmaster, maturity, um, lesson learning kind of energy at the very top of your chart. But this is also a really nice space in the 10th house of ambition because the 10th house is not just about your career, but it's also about that soul level calling. Are you doing work out in the world that meets your soul level calling? It's about your reputation. And it's also about your very personal ambition. What do you want to be doing out there? And with having Saturn in Capricorn at the top of your chart, you get the opportunity to see just how important success in certain areas is to you, what success in certain areas is to you. Saturn is the planet of discipline. It's about maturity. I teach that it's always about spiritually maturing us, bringing us to this next level, right? So it's time for you to have this cycle where you are really gaining mastery over this area of your life. So it's gearing up at this point to help you in all kind of career related matters. For some of you, it will be taking a promotion, taking on more responsibility at work, things like that. Some of you are completely going to be re overhaul, re overhauling, overhauling your careers this year, maybe moving from something that you have never done before into something that you're going to be doing now, this could look really, really different. Now, what I can tell you is that everything with this Saturn energy, bringing the structure, bringing the maturity, bringing the achievement here is about putting you in alignment with what you're actually supposed to be doing and what actually brings you joy because they're one in the same. Now, if you have been leaning into this Saturn energy, you've been working with it, you've been taking actions to move things, to help you move up in your career, to change the career. If you've been taking action to do that, um, and you've been disciplined in this area, I think that as Saturn goes on, it actually feels like a little bit more success to you, right? It's a great time where you could have a very, very sound business situation come into your life. You could make some really solid, sturdy um, career progression here. Now, I will tell you, if you are coming into 2018 and you've just been willy-nilly, you've been thinking about ideas for your career, but you have not been taking action. If you've been thinking about things, but there hasn't really been that movement, you may find that the first six months to a year of this Saturn transit through Capricorn feels very heavy for you in the career force because what's happened is that you still have lessons to learn about maturity. Now, this is not good, bad, or other. So don't let anybody tell you that. You got to learn what you got to learn. So whatever you've been doing, Saturn's going to meet you where you're at, show you where the cracks are, and then start to show you how you can gain some speed. Now, one of the things that can also happen when Saturn's in Capricorn is we start to feel this kind of pressure from authority figures, or we feel like we are kind of, you know, we're under somebody else's thumb or something like that, or, the, or your life's just making demands on you that maybe you feel like you can't meet. This is all in an attempt to help you grow, okay? Saturn is all about creating structure for you here, for giving you mastery, for giving you this next level of maturity. So don't worry, Saturn still has your back, all right? Now, we're not going to see Saturn make any kind of move until 2020, so we're going to be talking about that for a hot minute. But we've got Jupiter, who's also just recently made a move in October 2017. He's going to be rolling in Scorpio. This is a deep... Um, this is a connected energy to the eighth house. This is a place that is depth, it's intensity, it's transformation, it's empowerment. That's what that Scorpio energy is all about. Now the eighth house is about other people's money or joint resources. Any place where we have a joint something, we're working with another person, we have intimacy with other people, your partner's bringing in some finances, you need taxes, you need loans, you need financial aid, wherever there is a joint something or a joint investment, this is where Jupiter is bringing confidence. He's bringing wisdom to the table so that you are investing um, appropriately. If you are in a relationship, you could definitely see that maybe your partner's income gets really delicious for you at this time. And you have this energy to roll with all the way until November 2018, then 
Jupiter will move into Sagittarius. But there's also some key dates that I'm going to give you as I break it down for dates to pay attention to with Jupiter because we have some positive energy where he works with Neptune a couple times, as well as times where Jupiter is going to be working with Pluto. And don't worry, I'll break all of those down in every monthly that I give you. Plus, I'm going to break the year down by some dates at the end of this video as well. But just know that while Jupiter's in Scorpio, we have this expansion here in this eighth house place that could be really divine. And Aries, because you've had so much of your world start to look different lately, you may be needing to find some new joint connection here, right? You may be coming into some different relation with different joint resources. Now, when Jupiter moves into Sagittarius, November 8th, we start to come into this energy where Jupiter is very comfortable. He's the ruling energy of Sagittarius. So now you go from this place of just exploring the depths to actually exploring, putting some truth out there. You're bringing the wisdom to the table. You can start teaching. This is a wonderful energy. But what I love the most about Jupiter and Sagittarius is this rules the ninth house for you. So this is expansion. Jupiter wants you to get out from where you are. He says, ugh, get out. Go out in the world and be, right? So you could be teaching. Teaching, you could be publishing, you could be broadcasting, you could be foreign things. Whatever happens that gets you out into the world, sharing a message is what you could see yourself start to come into. And Jupiter is giving you the self-confidence and the sexy sassy to be able to do it. So it's really delicious. Now Uranus has been in your sign. You spent some time here, still in your sign as we come into 2018. And man, Aries, I bet you look around your life and you were like, man, this looks way different than I thought it was going to. And Uranus has come. He's been in your sign. He's gotten you out of the rut. He's changed your world around, brought some new innovation, some new ideas, some new intuition, probably some new people, some new social groups, some new long range goals, right? especially into your relationships. I can't imagine there's an Aries out there whose relationships don't look significantly different. And as Uranus continues to move through Aries, you're gonna to continue to see those differences. You're gonna be able to get unstuck over and over and over again. But it also will urge you to develop a lot of the talents that you have. Now, Uranus on May 15th is going to move into the sign of Taurus and stay there all the way until November. So, so as Uranus takes this move into Taurus, it's actually gonna to start to govern the second house space for you. So Uranus Uranus is also going to bring you some new ideas, some innovative ideas around finances, right? Around the things that you value, around material possessions, about your values, your self-esteem. So all of these things are going to start to feel a little bit different. And for you, Aries, because there's such a high reflection on career stuff happening in 2018 with Saturn up there, one of the things I really feel like happens is that it kind of digs up a talent that you have that maybe you haven't been cultivating or putting out there yet because you could be putting it out there, especially as a means to make money pretty solid, right? But it'll definitely change your financial world and your world of values and what you value as well. Now, while, um, Uranus is going to be in Taurus until November, then it's going to retrograde. So it's going to actually step back into your sign, which is so beautiful because it actually gives you this chance to relook at, get some innovative ideas about how to make money, values, all of these things, then step back into your sign and say, hey, what'd you come up with while I was gone, right? And then it goes back in, in March of 2019 to Taurus, and then we move along with that energy. But that's a pretty nice little dance for you to be able to take advantage of, especially trying to move yourself forward in the world of finance and career. Now, of course, those aren't the only planets that we have. We have also got Mars and Venus taking retrogrades, and of course, Mercury's gonna be taking some retrogrades, but Mars and Venus are the next big ones we really need to be concerned with. So between June 22nd and August 22nd, August 27th, we want to relook at plans, actions, desires, movement, energy, any of those kinds of things because Mars is going to be retrograde and it's going to be retrograde in Aquarius. So here's the thing about the 11th house space for you. Mars is your ruling planet. So where are you putting your energy with social groups? Where are you putting your energy with friends? Where have you been in in action around these things. Where have you not been showing up, right? This is a great time for you to reevaluate that. I will tell you that while there are many more videos to come, I do suggest that during a Mars retrograde, if you can avoid doing any elective surgical procedures, it's a good time to do that because Mars does rule things that have to do with war and cutting is definitely a lot like war. So if you can avoid that, fine. If you got to get new Chi-Chi's, I get it. Go get them. 
Venus is also going to be taking a retrograde and this is going to be happening from October 5th all the way until November 16th. Now, when Venus goes retrograde, relationship stuff can feel like it's under pressure. This doesn't mean that your relationship will fail. It doesn't mean that your relationship will succeed. It means that you will reflect and re-evaluate, right? Venus is going to be going retrograde first in the sign of Scorpio. She will back up into the sign of Libra. So eighth house Scorpio, seventh house Libra. And then as she turns direct, we'll resume that orbit. But what you get to reevaluate here is you and your partner may be figuring something else out. Maybe you're figuring out things about money or about value or about space. Who knows? Maybe because we've also got some energies that will be around housing stuff. Maybe you're moving in with somebody or your housing situation is changing. So whoever you have joint space or joint relationship with, you're having to reconsider how you do these things. Other things that just may happen is if your relationships, any relationships, business, partnership, um, Children, the relationship of you with you, that's going to be a big one for you to get settled into. Any of those things where there are cracks or misunderstanding, Venus actually helps to bring some harmony by showing you what needs a little bit of repair. So pretty good stuff happening. I'm really excited to jump in and break this year, year down by date for us so that we can get out there and enjoy a little bit of the rest of 2017 and of course 2018. All right, so January 31st, we start our sequence of the eclipses that we're going to be having. And this year, I'm going to be talking a lot to you about the difference between the total and the partial eclipses, because it's pretty important to understand the depth that that brings to how things are changing. And of course, where we find those things in your chart. So January 31st, we've got a total um, lunar eclipse happening in Leo. Now, this is your fifth house, okay? So Fifth house energy is about joy, creative expression, children, um, starting new things, romance, all of these things, gambling, they all taking a risk of any variety. All of this falls into this fifth house space. Now, as we're having this lunar eclipse, all of the eclipse energies that we experience in 2018 will be connected to a cycle that began in 2016. So think back, what were you manifesting? What was happening? What were you trying to change? Because let's start to see how that was showing up. What did you put on your, oh, I wish my life looks like this list in 2016. Does it look a little bit closer now, right? The universe is listening. How is it showing up? So we'll be having that in Leo energy. It will also signal some kind of ending acknowledgement or adjustment in this area for you as well. When we get to February 15th, we're going to have a solar eclipse, and this is in Aquarius. So again, in the 11th house. So it mirrors very much so some of the energies of 2017 with the Leo Aquarius energy. But a solar eclipse here in your 11th house, new friends, new social groups, new social networking, a new... Um, group of friends, new long range goals, you can set them in place and watch for the next six months to a year for them to play out and pan out. And I promise you, this too is a continuation. There's something your heart and your soul has been wanting and you are moving towards it. And when you're not, the universe and the, the alignments are going to show you. May 15th, we have Uranus moving into the sign of Taurus where it's going to stay here in your second house until November. Then it will retrograde and move on and then we will see some more Uranus in Taurus as we get into 2019. But Uranus here takes this activation in Taurus in your second house. Finances, values, these things start to get different. June 26th, through August 27th, we've got Mars taking that retrograde starting there in Aquarius. So re-looking over this 11th house area. Some friends may need to go. Some social networking things may need to go. Some social alignments may need to go. But you may also find out, and this is not just cut everybody off time, it may also be that you find out where you're not showing up in the friendship zone. And you may also find out that some long-range goals or beliefs that you have have needed some innovation and some updating because they no longer fit the new version of who you are Aries. When we get to July 13th, we have a solar eclipse that's happening in Cancer. So here we go, Aries. This is this energy I was talking about where your housing area is going to get different. Now, I always talk about the fourth house also being foundational ideas that we've been build, building our life upon. And definitely, I think those are getting different at this point. It's a brand new beginning. 
but your physical household, your domestic zone could be getting very different. You could be moving, you could be moving in, you could be moving out, you could be moving things around. New people, new energies are coming into your life and your space this year. And this is just a beautiful reset and who better to do it in than the eclipse energy of cancer, our most home and nurturing energy. So really exciting time to see what changes for you there. July 27th, we've got another total lunar eclipse. This one's happening in Aquarius in the 11th. So this is, again, it talks a little bit about this 11th house space. What needs adjustment in the 11th house for you? August 11th, we have a solar eclipse. This one is in Leo. So again, we see fifth house energy. So you see we're mirroring a bit of a pattern that we've already experienced. But as you show up to the second set of eclipses between the Aquarius and Leo energy, you're a lot more prepared to see if you're on track moving things forward. October 5th through November 16th, we've got Venus taking that retrograde, first in Scorpio in the 8th house, then in Libra in the 7th house. As we end the year, November 8th, Jupiter making this move into very comfortable, homey energy of Sagittarius in your ninth house. We're getting ready to expand you out into the world, expand your learning, expand your truth, and definitely expand your visibility. It's going to be a great year. I look forward to walking with you through every single week and every single month. And of course, teaching you along the way and meeting you in those one-on-one -on -one appointments and as many live chats as I can get in here. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click down in the description box down below. Grab your birthday appointment because when they're gone, they are gone. I love you guys.